Hi all, I am Gaurav. Welcome to Introduction to Scala. I am starting this series with an intent of sharing my Scala knowledge. Hello all and welcome to this discussion of tuples in Scala. There are multiple containers in Scala that can be used to pass the values around. Let's have a glance at various options available in Scala. We have tuples that we are going to discuss in a short while. Then we have list. List is the most commonly construct used in Scala. It is a collection of elements. Maps, which is a key value construct. Options. Options is a container that may have zero or one value of a given type. Arrays, which is again a collection of elements. And then we have mutable collections. Collect these are the collections that can be modified while in use. Let us see tuples in more detail. Tuples are a bunch of values enclosed within parentheses. You can think of tuples as lightweight containers to pass the values around. Elements in tuples can be of different type. Hence, it is an excellent alter alternative to small and simple classes that we used to declare in Java just to pass the multiple values. Tuples are ordered containers. The elements can be accessed in order as underscore one, underscore two, and so on. We'll see this when, when we go to the demo of tuples. Tuples are different from collections. All collections in Scala and in Java implement interface iterable. Tuples rather implements set of traits, tuple one, tuple two, and so on. Based on the number of values in a tuple, Traits are like interfaces in Java. Let us see tuples in action now. I am going to use Scala Interactive Shell or Ripple to demonstrate tuples. As discussed earlier, we can create our first tuple by simply throwing together a bunch of values and enclosing them between a pair of parentheses. And Scala type entrance does the rest. It is tuple that stores information about the make and model of the phone. Notice how Scala inferred each individual type of this four value tuple. There is also another way, another easy way to create a two element tuple. That's a key value pair and that's using the arrow syntax or the arrow notation that you have see uh, that you can see highlighted on the screen now. Here, I create a simple tuple with phone model and year of its release. You can see that the key and the value are separated using an arrow. Next, if you want to access the number of elements in a tuple, you can use product entity method of tuple object. Product entity method returns an integer and in our case, it is four. Earlier in the video, we discussed that tuples are ordered container. Let us see how. If you want to fetch any individual element in the tuple, you can access it using position of the element. For example, to fetch the, to fetch the first element, I will say phone details underscore one. Phone details underscore two will give us the next element in the tuple and so on. However, there is a cleaner and easier way to access each individual value in tuple. We can specify a bunch of values separated by commas and enclosed in parentheses on the left hand side of the assignment operation. When that happens, as you can see, Scala will assign the individual elements of the tuples to the values on the left. For instance, here I have four values. Each of those values corresponds to one element from our four element tuple. Notice again how Scala has determined the type of each individual element. Next up, let's see how we can apply a function literal to every element of a tuple. To apply function literal, we need to make use of product iterator dot for each method. In this example, we are going to print each and every element of the tuple using println. Now let us have a look at how we can pass a tuple to a method and return a tuple from the method. Let us consider this getModel and size method 
The method is used to fetch the model and size of the phone once provided with phone details. Notice how we have declared the type of tuple in the incoming method parameter. This time we are only interested in model and screen size. Hence, we will not fret about the names of other two variables. Rather, we will use underscore to denote other two variables. Once we have model and screen size, we are going to return a two value tuple from the method. When we call the method get model and size, either we can assign the result to a tuple model and size tuple or we can choose to assign it to an individual val model and screen size and that way it would be a cleaner. That is all for tuples in Scala. Hope you have enjoyed learning tuples. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please post your comments and suggestions.